Hi, I'm Mark Jardine, the managing editor of yachtsandyachting.com and sailworld.com. And I'm talking to Saskia Clark, who won Olympic silver medal at London 2012 and a gold medal in Rio 2016. And yesterday did a talk in the Knowledge Zone about making decisions on board the boat. Now, first of all, Sask, when people talk about crews traditionally, they always it's, it's plays second fiddle to the helm. But in a two-person boat, a two-person dinghy, the roles are without doubt equally split and um, the decision making on board, a lot of it is down to you. Yeah, I mean I understand why crewing has that reputation because obviously when we're learning uh, it's kind of a, a really quick easy way to get sailing, you jump in a boat at your club or whatever and get crewing. Um, but definitely at Olympic level, uh, you know, it's very 50-50 partnerships. You, know, you can't compete on a world stage if you're kind of only half input, you know, only half of you is inputting. So you know, both of us are 100% observing, uh, analysing, and making decisions. Yeah. And the role you have with your helm, you must have to make it almost symbiotic so that you know exactly what you're thinking, what you're going to be doing next. How important is that? Yeah, I mean, by the time we got to Rio, Hannah and I were probably like that, or definitely, definitely like that on a lot of the set play kind of pieces, like rounded marks or you know, hoisting and stuff. Um, and if you kind of get that uh, computer mode, uh, then you get a lot of like bandwidth or you know like brain space to start analysing the more complex things and uh, you know sort of going for those uh, those moments which might be the hero moments where you kind of might pick a, pick a shift or something that would win the race by five minutes. So all of the auto automatic processes just come naturally to you after that amount of time and it's then just spotting the little things that make the difference to, between winning a regatta, winning an Olympic gold or just coming down in third yeah. or fourth. I mean it definitely took some time we didn't and our London campaign was very short and we kind of did that campaign in a very traditional uh, crew makes the decisions upwind, helm makes the decisions downwind because we didn't have much time. And basically our whole Rio campaign was about breaking down um, that, those sort of communication loops, finding out where mine and Hannah's personal strengths were and how we could uh, combine those back together and you know, be a really world leading team. Now, you're at the top of the pile now with the Olympic gold medal. When you were growing up though, who did you aspire to be like in sailing? Um, it took me quite a while actually. To, I wanted to be Sally Gunnell on the athletics track was uh, uh, was my thing, uh, and then I I was really lucky. I, I didn't like sailing that much until I was about 11, 12, and I had a really cool gang of mates at home, and we basically just sort of dragged each other through, having water fights, mud fights the whole way through, um, and just really enjoying like what we were doing, and actually. Without sort of realising, as a group, we started doing really well in the oppies and then sort of moved into lasers as you know, sort of a group of three or four um, in the national squad, youth nationals and stuff, and doing pretty well. So, like, I, I love, you know, like, they're, they're sort of my, those, my mates at that time are kind of my heroes because we had such a great time together. This brings me on to the whole fun element of our sport. We are so lucky with sailing that we can go out on the water. You see the land from the sea. You see. It's just an incredible place to be and the fun element must be so important even when you're campaigning at the very highest level. How do you keep that fun element going? It's hugely important and actually me and Han, you know, our Rio campaign we did um, a bit like maybe a business would. We sort of had a mission statement and some team values and fun was one of those team values and it's, when you're sort of doing an Olympic campaign and you're being quite serious and professional it's really easy to forget and that drop off at the end. And, um, because you're sort of just too busy um, and actually as soon as that happened for us uh, we sort of would always notice a bit of a drop in our energy and then our performance on the water you know and uh, and it would be sort of the job of either one of us or our coach Joe to sort of point out we're not having enough fun here let's go and do a like, meal out and cinema trip or you know just something sort of a little bit away from the boat park to sort of get that teamness back that fun element back and it was really important to us. And the athleticism, you talked there about Sally Gunnell and being a hero, a hero of yours when you were growing up. The athleticism you need crewing is, is very high indeed, so how do you keep yourself fit for that role? It's changed a lot. Like it, sort of in my time in the 470, it changed massively. And I think you know I've been out of the 470 for two years now, and I think it's taken another you know huge step forward. Um, so there's a lot around the um, sort of maintenance and um, staying injury-free piece with crewing, like especially now with the pump, the upwind pumping, like with your shoulders and stuff and your back. 
Um, so my programme was very based around some strength and weight building, bulk building in my shoulders for leverage. Um, and then a bit like, you know, fit a sort of standard aerobic program and stuff. And a lot around the physio element of keeping it injury free or putting my body back together again. And if a young sailor is aspiring to get all the way to the Olympics, what one piece of advice would you give to them to keep them on track? Um, I think you have to be tenacious, I think is probably like, you know, that um, uh, we see a huge amount of talent coming through uh, from like the juniors and the youths and stuff and um, they sort of dip their toe in the kind of Olympic scene. And it's really hard, you go from being a, a, a big fish in a little pond when you're 18, in your full 20 or your laser radial, and suddenly you're racing against double Olympic champions who have done this for years, and you have to keep turning up every day, getting beaten, and just keep taking those steps forward and stuff. And it's really hard, like I totally empathize, you know, we, we all sort of got through that phase somehow, and it might be a two year or five year, eight year phase, um, but you, you have to get through it. And to retain people in the sport, of course, only one person or two people are going to make it to the Olympic level out of the hundreds, the thousands that will want to actually get there. How do you then, what do you say to people who want to stay in the sport but might be disillusioned because they haven't made it to the upper echelon? What should they then do? I think, um, like, doing Olympic campaigning is, is awesome, amazing, and the quality of racing we have at Olympic events is amazing, but. You just have to go to some of our national championships here, like in the uh, you know, RS fleet, for example, the Merlin Rocket Fleet is having a bit of resurgence, the firewalls and stuff. You know, some, uh, some of my Olympic friends go and get their asses kicked at those, that kind of stuff, you know. And so I, I think you know, it's still an amazing sport. It is not, it, you're not necessarily on the Olympic path, but uh, you're still doing some really high end racing, high quality racing with some amazing competitors. Well, Sask, many thanks for your time and great to hear your insights there. <laughs>